Blessings, my brothers and sisters. We welcome you into the house of hope on this third Sunday in August. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but there's no God like our great God. If you believe that, I'm going to ask you to go in prayer with me this hour. Lord God, we make a public proclamation this hour that there is no God like our God. There is no God like our great Jehovah. For you, Lord God, are the Savior of the world. You are seated on the throne of glory, crowned with all dominion and power. Lord God, we acknowledge today that you alone are God, and there is no God like you, our Lord. What You alone, Father God, move mountains. You alone heal sickness, Lord God. You alone can do the impossible. So we shout glory to the Lamb who is seated on the throne of our hearts. From age to age you stand. From everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You are all alone on your throne, Lord God. Nothing can be compared to you. You are all alone on your throne, Lord God. Nothing can be your rival. Nothing can your equal nothing is none like there's none like you Lord God so as we gather together in this hour we ask and pray that you would manifest yourself like never before we need you in this hour Lord God we glorify you in this hour Lord God we will lift no other God higher we will bow before no other we will worship no other for you Lord God are the undefeated champion of our lives you reign supreme. You hold all power in your hand. You're sovereign in all of your ways. Great is the Lord our God. And you are worthy to be praised. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading for today will be coming from Jude 24 and 25. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who is God alone, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, dominion, and power, and authority are his before all time, in the present, and before beyond all time. I came as a messenger of hope to let you know this morning that can't nobody beat our God at being God. Amen. Come on, somebody shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Father, we give you glory and honor for you are God and God alone. And we know that whatever we need, we can find in you. Somebody clap your hands right here.
really want to tell you I need you.
somebody to shout like you're giving it over to God. My life is in your hands. Hallelujah. Somebody say everything. Come on, come on, wherever you are in your kitchen, in your living room, say everything. God, you're my healer. God, you're my way maker. Smith and the entire House of Hope Atlanta family, we welcome you into the presence of God. Listen, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we want you to put in the comments where you are worshiping with us from. We want to shout you out, tell us where you are, but then also because we miss your faces, we miss your, your, your hugs, we miss all of what it meant to be together 
in this house. And so what we want you to do, we want you to take a selfie and post it with the hashtag Hope Graham. Again, on behalf of Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr., Lady Andrea Smith, and the entire House of Hope family, we welcome you into God's presence. He is our everything. We hope you feel welcome. Come on, let's sing it together. This house shall be called. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, you all give God praise if he's your everything. I'm still stuck right there. He is my everything. Come on, type that in the comments right now. He's my everything. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Rophi, Jehovah Raphaqa, Jehovah Siskanu. He's El Elyon, Adonai. He is everything you need. Our God is that. And certainly we thank God for you, 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 and you, and we appreciate you. Uh, out of all the services that you could have attended virtually today for you to be a part of our experience, we are grateful and we're thankful to God for you, 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 and you. Wherever you are, whatever you may be doing, I want you to know that God loves you and has a great plan for your life. And certainly he's been our protector over the past 17 months. It reminds me of what the scriptures teach us, that the sun won't smite us by day nor the moon by night, but he's going to preserve our souls. And certainly we thank God for that. And thank God for being our keeper. And of course, this is our communion Sunday. And I want you to make ready now uh, to uh, remember that at the conclusion of this service, we're going to partake of the Lord's table. And I want you to get the elements together. We have a moment of transubstantiation. Uh, some of you may have the elements we're using here. If not, use what you have. Uh, it's really more about what it represents. It's a symbol of the body and blood of our Lord. So already in advance, start thinking about uh, the communion that's going to take place at the end of this service. And we're praying that the blood of Jesus will continue to protect you and be for you what it's been since it was uh, instituted there at Passover, uh, that whatever shall come nigh your dwelling won't get to you because you're covered by the blood of Jesus. And certainly to those who are watching, those who are hospitalized, those names are scrolling even now. We're praying for you, all of our members who are convalesced, those in home health care. We want you to know that our prayers are with you. I want to thank our deacons ministry and congregational care team for taking care of our membership even throughout the pandemic. And so those who are convalesced now, those names are scrolling, those who've been hospitalized, and even those who face bereavement. We're still praying for the Willard family, uh, Deaconess Annie Willard, one of our deacon's spouses passed away and uh, uh, was a very special member here at our church and uh, very special to Pastor Shepherd and to me. And we celebrated her home going a few days ago. So please keep the Willard family in your prayers and any other names uh, that are on the sick list, please keep them in your prayers because he can be our everything. He can be our healer and our sustainer even in difficult times, amen? And because he is a God who blesses us, we're still doing ministry, trying to provide for the needs of the ministry. And if you need something, you can reach out. Our congregational care team is here to help you. Uh, if you have a life crisis or transition, hospitalization, death, Please know we're here for you. You can just text the word CARE. It's on the screen now, C-A-R-E, to 
to the number 678-201-1351. So if you're experiencing life transition, a crisis, death, bereavement, hospitalization, we want to serve you. So please just text that word CARE to the number 678-201-1351, or you can call the church office and a member of our congregational care team will be there for you. With that being said, we're going to move quickly. Our media ministry has prepared our hope happenings. And we're going to go quickly to see what Corey and Crystal have cooked up for us. I'll be right back in a moment to continue in worship. Let's, let's check out our hope happenings now. Greetings, family. Corey and I are here again to get you all the information you need here at the House of Hope Atlanta. You know it, Crystal, and I want to start this thing off by welcoming all of our new members who just completed our virtual spiritual boot camp. Crystal, did you... I did. Keep it pushing. Are you keep, official? Keep moving. Okay. But to you guys, we are so excited to have you as a part of our family. Welcome. And I know we've said it many times before, but I need all kids and youth to make sure you do not miss the Sunday and Wednesday Zoom sessions. There are two different sessions for K through 5th and 6th through 12th. Just go to Hope Youth Now on all social media platforms for more information. Yes, ma'am. And in case you missed it before when we said it, because we've said it plenty of times, there is one convenient number for all of your needs. Now, if you need prayer, text the word prayer. If you would like to be saved, text the word salvation. And if you want to become a member of the House of Hope Atlanta, text the word connect to the number on the screen. And no matter what you may be struggling with, Celebrate Recovery is here to help to help you find healing through Jesus Christ. Join the Thursday Zoom sessions. Send an email to the address on the screen for more information. And if you're experiencing bereavement, if you're sick, you're going through a life transition or a crisis, a member of our congregational care team is here to assist you. Just text the word CARE to the number right there on the screen. Now we have to leave you all for today, but remember, wait, Corey, do you remember the message? Of course. I, I, mean, I didn't write it, but it's almost like I did because life with God is better in every way. Every day, be blessed. Be blessed. Now, Krista, I need for these people to make sure they remember some of these announcements because we've been saying them consistently for about a year and a half but at you least. you tell them a little nicer than that. You're I'm not trying to, get... to be mean about it, but some of y'all need to pay attention so you know what's going on because Krista halfway don't even know what's Ooh. going on and she's giving the announcements. So what does that tell you? If she ain't paying attention, why should you, I guess? All right. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Crystal, for keeping us abreast and entertained all throughout the pandemic. I want everybody to please make note of all of the things that are happening virtually, the things that are online. Please keep these things and please lock in, lock in, lock in. Uh, we're doing hybrid ministry now. So while some are waiting to get back in the doors, you can be connected to your Life University group or to the ministry functions, even from a virtual format. So please take advantage of all of the great things that are happening here in terms of ministry and through our digital space. Uh, I want to thank you. We're getting ready to worship God through giving. And before I do that, I would be remiss if I did not express my sincere appreciation and gratitude to you for how you have served and been faithful. Uh, we're getting ready to celebrate in two weeks our 12th year uh, anniversary of our first service here on this campus. And uh, fifth Sunday of August of 2009 was our first service, and we are two weeks away from celebrating that. We're going to do something a little special this time in two weeks uh, in honor of our 12th year anniversary. And those of you who know me know very well that while this campus has been a blessing to us, it has been an Achilles heel at the same time. It has brought much joy and much pain. Uh, this this uh, campus has had words like hallelujah coming out of my mouth and had words like Hennessy going in my mouth. And so this has been uh, a, a process to say the least. And uh, But I'm so thankful that God has kept us and is keeping us. And we've been able to make some incredible strides uh, over the past uh, 16 months, our Mission 20 campaign. Because of your support, we are, we're finalizing the 10th phase. We've gone through all 10 phases. As you can see on the screens, uh, with new roofs on both the uh, atrium, the HF Shepherd Multiplex, the Edgewood Center, all new office furniture. Uh, we've been able to re repair 
new AC units, chiller unit on the Smith Center, new chiller unit on the in the uh, cathedral, as you can see it right there, 300 tons, uh, replacing all those AC units, all 13 flat roofs on the cathedral that have been a problem for us, Re getting ready to install the elevators, parking lot, everything that we have uh, set out to do for the past seven years, it's finally coming to pass, and that's because of the favor of God, because of vision, but, because, but most importantly, because of people like you who have been faithful, who love this ministry. And so we want you to continue. I need you to continue to do what you're doing. Uh, we're making preparations to get back into worship. All right. With that being said, we're getting ready to worship God through giving. Would you bow with me now for a word of prayer? Oh, God, you are mighty and you're awesome. And we love you and bless you for being our everything. <laughs> and because you are everything, we've come to honor you, to give you a portion of that which you've entrusted to our hands. Lord, receive these now, our gifts. Bless and sanctify every gift and every giver. Let no one lack, let no one have a need after giving these gifts on today. Multiply them and use them for your service. Lord, I pray for those who are without job, without resource right now, would you open up the windows of heaven, be Jehovah Jireh, provide employment for them so they can take care of their families and then make a contribution for kingdom building. Receive these now our gifts. Let no one lack or have a need after giving these gifts. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, there are four ways you can give while you're watching. First of all, you can give by text to give. Text to give. It's on your screen. You can text the codes H-O-H-A-T. That's H House of Hope Atlanta Tithe to 678-201-1351 or H-O-H-A-O, -H -O, House of Hope Atlanta Offering, to that same number, 678-201-1351. If you want to give to the building campaign, help us finish Mission 2020. It's now called God First. So that's H-O-H-A-G-F. I need every member of our church to give something. After you're giving your tithes, please give to GF, 20, 50, 100, give something. And uh, we're going to celebrate on the fifth Sunday, 12 years of being on this campus. So you can text to give. Second, if you want to give through Cash App, Dollar sign H O H A T L. The information is on the screen. Thirdly, if you want to give through the website, you can give through the website while you're watching. Then, if you want to give through the PO Box, PO Box three six one four nine nine Decatur, Georgia three zero zero three six. Or if you want to bring it by the church office, as some of our members do, our church office is open daily uh, upon the uh, the regular office hours. So please give right now. Don't give grudgingly or of necessity to give cheerfully. Text to give, cash app through the website, or send it through the P.O. Box. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir. Uh, so thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your gifts. I'm so excited today. Uh, I am so excited today. I'm excited because it's the Lord's Day. I'm excited because it's Communion Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays. But I'm also excited because I don't have to work today. I get a chance to be fed. I keep telling you, every pastor needs a pastor. Every leader needs a leader. Every mentor needs to be mentored. And uh, every, every coach needs to be coached. And I am so thankful that today we have brought uh, in with us a native of Chicago, Illinois, graduate of Fisk University and Morehouse School of Religion and uh, one of God's greatest preachers is going to be with us. I'm not going to say much more. We have a video introduction, but I am, in the words of my mother, tickle pink that he's with us. He's been a friend throughout the years. I have a, a great deal of respect and regard for him. And, uh, and so we're going to have a video introduction that our media mentor has put together to introduce him formally. And, uh, and so after the video introduction, the next um, thing that's going to take place, our praise team is going to come back and bless us with another selection. And then after the ministry of music from our praise team and music ministry, the next speaking voice will be that of our preacher for today. I'm not going to tell you who he is. I want you to be surprised, but you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat. Do me a favor. If you got something on too tight, please loosen it. Amen. Uh, get yourself comfortable. Come on, ladies. You know, you don't, you listen. If you got on spank, take them off. If you got a tie on, loosen it, brothers, because we're going to be in for a ride today. And so uh, the video introduction is next. 
followed by our praise team, and the next speaking voice will be that of our preacher for the day. Lift your hand, repeat after me, and repeat this, these words. We need a word from the Lord. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I want you to hear the video introduction and be blessed. You're in for a treat. Go ahead and send this link to somebody. Share it right now because something great is going to happen on today. Praise team, come on back and bless us. And the next speaking voice after the praise team will be the preacher of the hour. Amen. So video introduction, praise team, and then the word of God. God bless you. The Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby serves as the senior pastor of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. A proud native of Chicago, Cosby received the Bachelor of Arts degree in Religion and English from Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee, the Master of Divinity degree in Homiletics and Christian Education from the Morehouse School of Religion at the Interdenominational Theological Center, ITC, in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Doctor of Ministry degree in Homiletics from Northern Baptist Theological Seminary in Lombard, Illinois. As the successor to the founding pastor of Wheeler Avenue, Dr. William A. Lawson, Pastor Cosby has been blessed to continue the ministry of this intentionally intergenerational congregation in the inner city of Houston, Texas since 2004, having served as associate pastor since 1998, with four Sunday worship services and a membership of more than 18,000. In 2008, he was inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. And in 2013, he became the founder and CEO of Preaching with Power and Authority Ministries, a corporation committed to the pedagogy and promotion of relevant biblical preaching for the 21st century. Among the gifts and talents with which God has blessed Pastor Cosby, none are more meaningful and fulfilling to him than preaching and teaching. Dr. Cosby is married to his high school sweetheart, Miss Audrey Marie Cosby, and they have been blessed with three beautiful daughters, Adrienne Marie, Ashley Marie, Aliyah Marie, and two sons, Marcus D. the second and Matthew D. Cosby. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, we came to make a declaration this morning that anything can happen when the presence of God is interjected into a situation. Come on, I want you to just start declaring that all over your home. Anything can happen with God. Hallelujah. Anything can happen. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the what the creditors say, anything can happen in the presence of God. Hallelujah. With lifted hands, we're ready for a brand new demonstration of your power. We want more than stories. So we're declaring and believing for it now. We'll prepare the atmosphere so you can be welcome here. Oh, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment that you walk in, anything can happen, anything can happen, anything can happen. The moment that you walk into this room, come on, with lifted hands, with lifted hands. we're ready for a brand new demonstration. How many are ready for something new? We want more than stories. So we're declaring and believing for it now. We'll prepare so you can be. Come on, we'll pursue you without fear.
moment that you walk in, anything can happen. Hey. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment that you walk into this room. Come on, just invite him into wherever you are right now. Come on, let's worship every believer under the sound of my voice. Lift up your voices and give him glory all across this room. Father, we give you glory. Come on. Father, we give you the honor. We give you the praise, Lord. Hey, we see anything can happen. Anything can be the glory for the great things our God has done. Our God is great and greatly to be praised and on this third Sunday of the month of August we may as well give God the glory that is due unto his name. Wherever you are I want you to celebrate the fact that anything can happen the moment our God steps into a situation and to that God be all of the glory, honor and praise on this Sunday. How we give God praise for the esteemed and honored pastor of the House of Hope, the Reverend Dr. E. Dewey Smith. Right where you are, will you help me celebrate the man of God? And how wonderful it is to be in your presence, sir. I thank God for you, a friend and brother for many years, as he has already said. And I'm so grateful to be here at the House of Hope today and to share in this experience of worship as God continues to bless this great place called House of Hope, especially through the ministry of Dr. E. Dewey Smith. You are a blessed church. You already know that. But I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to share with you just how blessed you are as the people of God. Dr. Smith has shared with our congregation on multiple occasions there in Houston and has blessed us. And I'm just delighted to be here with him today and with this great singing aggregation. Good Lord. God bless them. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for blessing us today and for lifting your voice in praise to our great God. To all of the reverend clergy, I thank God for you and all those who walk by faith and not by sight. It's good to be alive on a Sunday and to celebrate the great things that our God continues to do in each one of our lives. To that God be all of the glory. Well, there's a word from the Lord today, and if you have your Bibles, if you have that app ready, I invite your attention to the New Testament gospel as recorded by the writer Luke. The New Testament gospel is recorded by the writer Luke at chapter 22, and we'll begin our reading at verse 31. The New Testament gospel is recorded by the writer Luke at chapter 22, and we'll begin our reading at verse 31. And if you have that passage of scripture, this is what the word of God says from the New International Version. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. That's enough. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, <laughs> that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers, when you are converted, says the King James Version, when you get some things settled, when you fix some things, when things get better, strengthen your brothers. By the time that his eyes are shared together on this Sunday, I want to talk from the subject, the sifting of the saints. The sifting of the saints. As we share together on this Sunday, I sub submit and even suggest that every one of us who has an abiding relationship with the Lord is grateful to God for the great things that he has done in our lives. We celebrate the fact that God is always up to something on our behalf. And as a consequence, if we really have an abiding relationship with him, all of us want to be used by God to make a difference in this world. Oh, yes. Many people just soak up the goodness of the Lord. But those of us who've really been blessed by the Lord and have an abiding relationship with him, we don't just want the blessings of God only. 
we likewise want to be a blessing because we've been so richly blessed. Those of us who know anything about uh, the experience of walking with the Lord, you know that God keeps on doing great things for us. And as a consequence, when you've gotten close enough to him, you just want to do great things for him. Somebody today understands that although we live in a Christian consumer culture where folk are just soaking up, soaking up, soaking up, there comes a time in each of our lives as we walk with the Lord when we just want to return the favor and let the Lord know just how grateful we are for everything that he's done. Somebody listening to me on this Sunday truly wants to be used by the Lord. Somebody wants to use your gifts to glorify God and to edify God's people. Somebody has a voice to sing like these singing saints today. Somebody has the desire to minister to God's people as Pastor Carner did today. Somebody wants to serve the Lord with gladness because you recognize that God's been so good to you when the Lord's been good to you when the Lord has blessed you abundantly at some point along the journey you just ought to bless him back you ought to be used for his glory you ought to be used to ensure that somebody's life is made better can I go old school in a new school church if I can help somebody as I pass along if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song if I can show somebody that he or she is traveling wrong then my living will not be in vain at some point you want to bless God and you want to bless God's people at some point you want to use what you've been given so that the world might be a better place somebody listening to me on this Sunday ought to testify I really do want to be used by God well if you want to be used by God it will amaze you the things that God will do through you so that somebody else's life can be made better if you really want to be used by God if you truly yield yourself if you surrender yourself if you present yourself as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord which is your reasonable service when you do that your life will be made so much better your life will be blessed it's a blessing to be a blessing and somebody today really chooses desires earnestly wants to be used by God well if you want to be used by God I came to tell you it's a blessing to be used by God the Lord will certainly lift you to places you never anticipated he will bless you in ways you never dreamed but if you truly want to be used by God it seems to me Dr. Smith that Luke chapter 22 suggests that in the same breath that you celebrate the utilization of by God you will likewise be sifted in the process of being used by God that anybody who chooses to be used by the Lord will undoubtedly have to go through a sifting season a sifting season that season where you are seemingly ripped tripped apart and separated so that that which God wants to use in your life might be developed and used for his glory sifting comes into every person's life as a matter of fact when we look at Luke chapter 22 we are looking at the apostle Peter who is told by the Lord Jesus that the enemy wants to sift him like wheat we're looking at one who is going to be used by God oh please know the story of the Apostle Peter does not begin in Luke chapter 22. No, you must understand that way back in Matthew chapter 16, the Lord said, listen here, man, I, I'm going to use you to build my church. I'm going to use you to ensure that people's lives are made better. I'm going to use you to make a blessing become what you never anticipated because you have put your life in my hands. It was in Caesarea Philippi when the Lord Jesus asked the disciples, whom do men say that I the son son of man am some said he was Jeremiah some said he was Elijah or John the Baptist or one of the prophets at which point Jesus said well since the folk around town don't know who I am who do you say that I am and only Peter only Peter was the one to respond he says oh I'm real clear on who you are thou art the Christ he the son of the living God at which point Jesus said blessed art thou Simon son of John for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you but my father which is in heaven and I'll give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and I say also that thou art 
Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it Jesus has just told Peter that he's going to use him to build the church he's going to use him to ensure that people's lives are made better he's going to use him to ensure that somebody is drawn closer to the Lord Jesus Christ that's worthy of celebration that Peter is going to be used by the Lord only because simply because he knew who he was did you catch that he knew who Jesus was he says I'm real clear that you are the Christ the son of the living God and that alone qualified him to be used by the Lord oh listen to me house of hope you don't have to have all these degrees some of these preachers have you don't have to know the Hebrew from the Greek you don't have to know Chronicles from Corinthians all you need to know is that man named Jesus is the Messiah the one sent to redeem and to save and based upon that he will use you to glorify his name he says I'm going to use you to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it that's Matthew chapter 20 that's Matthew chapter 16 but our text this Sunday is Luke chapter 22 and in Luke chapter 22 he says Simon Simon Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. He's trying to mess you up. He's trying to rip you to shreds. He's trying to mess up everything I just spent the last three years investing in you. He's trying to rip you to shreds. Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. What in the world is going on here? How did we move from I'm going to use you to build my church to the enemy is trying to tear you apart? How did we move from how I'm going to bless you to you and use you to ensure that people's lives are made better to all the way in Luke chapter 22 he's trying to ensure that you have nothing left to give. How do you move from I'm going to use you to ensure that nations shall be blessed I'm going to ensure that the enemy has an opportunity to tear you apart. All of us have to wrestle with the tension, don't we? <laughs> and at some point along our life's journey, we have to be sifted. These, these folk in antiquity understood sifting there. These agrarian people, they understood that the gar harvesters, the wheat harvesters would take that wheat onto the threshing floor. They'd shake out the impurities. They'd throw it up in the air. The good wheat kernels would be gathered together in bundles and the chaff, which was good for nothing, would fly away. You wouldn't have to be bothered with that no more. Look, let me give it to you again. I was talking too fast. I said when they wanted to harvest the wheat, they'd take it out onto the threshing floor. They'd shake out the impurities. They'd throw it up in the air. They'd, they'd make sure that the good wheat kernels got harvested in bundles and the chaff, which was good for nothing, would just fly away. You wouldn't have to be worried about that no more. They tell me the third time is the charm. Let me try it one more time. When they wanted to sift the wheat, they'd take it out onto the threshing floor, shake out the impurities. They'd throw it up in the air and the good wheat kernels would be harvested in bundles and the chaff, which was good for nothing, would just fly away. You wouldn't have to be worried about that no more. Come here, come here. Because somebody in this church, somebody at the house of hope, somebody listening to me understands exactly how it feels to feel like your life is being shaken and you don't have any idea when this shaking is going to stop. Somebody knows what it means to seemingly be tossed about, not knowing how in the world you're going to get your bearing straight. If you'll ever recover from the challenges you're dealing with, somebody knows what it means to be sifted. But please don't miss the whole process because the good wheat kernels will be gathered together in bundles and the chaff, which was good for nothing, would be separated. You wouldn't have to deal with that no more. Will you hear me when I tell you that all of us have to go through a sifting season? But don't you give up on the sifting season because it's harvesting some good stuff in your life so that when God gets ready to use you, that which was good for nothing will no longer be found and God will be able to take what he has invested in you and make you a blessing to somebody else. Simon! Simon! Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. It was on Thursday night, wasn't it? That Thursday night in that upper room with the Lord Jesus, he had just instituted the Last Supper. We call it the Lord's Supper. He had just taken the bread and the wine, given it to his disciples, said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He likewise gave them the cup, said, drink all of it. It's the new covenant in my blood. And immediately thereafter, he turns his gaze to Simon Peter and shifts from this meal that they had just had 
and tells him in no uncertain terms, Simon, hey, Simon, <laughs> Satan has asked to sift all y'all like wheat. Yeah, sift, sift you like wheat. It, he has asked. That's what the New International Version says. Um, uh, the, the, the King James Version says he has desired. But the New Revised Standard Version says he has demanded. He demanded to sift you like wheat. And by contextual implication, we can deduce that he has not only asked, demanded, or desired. He's been granted permission. That, that, that God has literally, through Jesus Christ, set him up for satanic devastation. He's put him out there for satanic agitation. Similar to that Old Testament brother by the name of Job, isn't it? Yeah, he, he just put him out there. Have you considered my servant Job? He just puts him out there and says, have at him. See what you can do to him. And just as it was with Job in the Old Testament, it is likewise with Luke in the New Testament that the enemy hey, has desired, demanded, asked to sift him like wheat. But may I please suggest in the first part of this little message that, um, uh, that, that the sifting season comes not just for a few of us, not just one or two of us, but uh, every saint is going to have to deal with a sifting season. Um, uh, uh, sifting shows up, watch this, despite your placement in the congregation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got to be sifted. Despite your placement in the congregation. Simon, Simon, watch the text. Satan has asked, New International Version, to sift all of you. Like we no, don't miss it. He's looking at Simon, but he's talking to all the disciples who are still remaining at that table. He literally says that he's trying to separate all y'all. He's trying to rip all of you to shreds. He's trying to reduce everything I have placed in you to absolutely nothing. He's trying to take all y'all out. And let's be clear, it doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter how spiritual you profess to be. Doesn't matter how saved folk think you are. Doesn't matter how many Bible verses you can quote. Doesn't matter how many times you pray on any given day toward the East. All of us are going to have to be sifted at some point in this journey. I need two or three people who know something about the sifting season to testify. I know what it feels like to seemingly be ripped to shreds, stripped apart of everything that was close to me, everything that I thought was near and dear to me. Somebody can testify. You know something about a sifting season. We can't look down on people when we're getting sifted. That don't mean that they, they did anything wrong. You just got to deal with it. It's just going to come in everybody's life. I need to talk to the super spiritual people who think you live above a sifting season. I need to help you understand what the Bible says. The Bible says many are the afflictions, come here, of the righteous. Uh, but don't stop there because the rest of the verse says, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Can I find somebody in here who's ever been through a sifting season? You watch the Lord bring you through, pull you out. Somebody can testify. Jesus said in this world, you will have tribulation. But don't stop reading right there because the next part of the verse said, but be of good cheer. That means go ahead and shout right there in your bedroom because I have overcome the world. Is there anybody listening to me who can testify that all of us are going to have to deal with some sifting seasons? But James says, even while you're going through it, count it all joy. Count it all joy when you deal with various kinds of trials and tribulations because the trying of your faith is working patience. Yeah, we all gotta give you, we all gotta be sifted. We all we all gotta go through it despite your placement in the congregation. Praise team! You gonna have to be sifted. Yeah. Ushers, yeah, you you gonna have to be sifted. Yes, yes. Media team, yep, yep, yep. With all the wonderful things you're doing, you're gonna have to be sifted. Yes, 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 preacher. You already know, you already know. You're gonna have to be sifted. All of us have to go through a sifting season. There's some people listening to me right now who know what I'm talking about because all of us are at home right now. All of us are watching church because we had to be sifted. This is a sifting season. All of us, ain't nobody not going through this pandemic. Everybody's dealing with it. It's seemingly getting worse. Variant to variant, and it's always getting worse, not getting better. Somebody knows what sifting feels like. Yeah, <laughs> don't mean you don't love the Lord. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're not anointed. No, no. Doesn't mean you're not in his will. Doesn't mean he doesn't have his hands on you. It 
just means you're alive. It means you're in the family. And when you're in the family, sifting seasons show up. Yeah. He says, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all y'all. Every last one of you. Every last one of you in the crew, he's trying to take you out. Uh, Simon, and we have to be sifted, watch, despite our placement in the congregation. But can I push it a bit farther? I submit that you and I have to be sifted, watch this, despite our penchant towards supplication. Our pension, despite our pension, our leaning, our inclination, despite our penchant, P E N C H A N T, our penchant towards supplication. Um, I read verses 31, 32, jump down to verse 39, because you'll find out that when they left that table, they went to Jesus' praying ground. They went to the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when they go there, Jesus asks them to pray with him. Because he, uh, he has to deal with now what he came to the world to deal with. He has to go through one of the roughest pieces of, 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 of time that he's ever going to have to deal with. He has to endure uh, the reason for which he came into the world. And the rubber is now about to meet the road. And so he has to pray. And when he prays, he tells the big three, Peter, James, and John, to go a little farther with him. He goes a stone's throw away from them. And when he goes a stone's throw away, he falls down on his face. And, and the Bible says sweat like drops of blood are pouring from his brow. Yeah, he goes into that place. He falls on his face. And this is what he says. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Did, did you catch it? Here's his prayer. He says, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He prays for an hour. He prays and then he goes back. Matthew tells the story in chapter 26. Mark tells the story in chapter 14. And here in Luke chapter 22, after he prays, he goes back to the brothers and finds them asleep. They're asleep, but you would be asleep too had you heard what happened in the upper room. They had the Passover meal. And after they had the Passover meal, Jesus gave them some more bread and wine. You know how you feel after you've had your wine. And so they've gone to sleep. They're asleep there in the garden. He says, wake up. Come on, spirit the willing, but the flesh is weak. I need you to pray with me that you fall into temptation. Bible says, according to these three gospel writers, he goes back a second time. And he prays the exact same prayer. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He prays that prayer and the Bible says it's in agony. He's in a place where he does not want to be seemingly the same reality that is the disciples is likewise the divine. He is not just dealing with the reality that Simon is sifted and the other brothers have been, are going to be sifted, but it seems like even the Savior is being sifted. And here he is in the garden, seemingly being ripped to shreds in agony, so says your Bible. And the Bible says he goes back the third time and prays, Father, hey, if it's possible. Let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. This speaks to me, doesn't it speak to you, Dr. Smith, about the reality that there are some things that happen in our lives that will make us go back to God over and over and over again, praying the exact same thing. I don't know who it was who started that rumor in the church that you never supposed to pray about the same thing over and over again and seemingly you seemingly lack faith. That is not the Bible. If Jesus prayed about the same thing three times, surely you and I are going to have to pray about the same thing over and over again. Come here, mama. Go ahead and pray for them children over and over and over. Come here, daddy. Go ahead and pray for that boy over and over and over again. Come on, spouse. Pray for your spouse over and over and over again. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sin and heal their land. House of Hope, we need to keep praying for the cessation of this virus. We need to keep praying that political leaders will keep their acts together. We need to keep praying that this world will find its senses and begin to call on God. We need to keep praying. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. 
Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open. These great scholars already know that those words are in the repetitive tense. Literally saying, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking until you get an answer. Well, I need to tell you that just because you pray don't mean you're going to have your way. Because although he prayed the same prayer repeatedly, the response is still the same. You got to go to the cross. Cup cannot, this cup of agony, cup of death, cup of sorrow cannot pass from you. But don't give up the fight. Don't stop praying. Because your Bible says right there in Luke chapter 22, after he prayed, the angels came and strengthened him. Oh, child of God, did you hear what I just said? Even if the answer is not what you expected, can I find 10 people who can testify? God still knows how to dispatch angels to strengthen you in the midst of the struggle. Is there anybody who can testify? He still gives me power to endure everything I've got to go through. Somebody ought to thank God that he keeps on giving you strength in the midst of the struggle. Somebody ought to be grateful that you're still alive even though you had to deal with some frustrating realities. Somebody ought to thank God that you're still surviving in the midst of all the agony and the depression and the frustration. Is there anybody who can still say, I'm still here? Anybody who can still say, I'm still alive? Anybody can testify, after all I've been through, I still have joy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He prays. Hey, sweat like drops of blood. Hey pouring from his brow. He prays in agony and sorrow. He prays to the Father that please let this bitter cup pass from me. But nevertheless, oh, thank God for that word. Not my will, but thy will be done. Can I find six people who can testify with those sisters that is still the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. And God says, listen, I have not changed the plan, but I will give you power to go through it. I have not changed my strategy, but I will give you strength to endure. Is there anybody who can testify? Even if he doesn't take the thorn, he still gives us grace hey, that is sufficient for us. And somebody ought to just go ahead and glory in your infirmity. Because the Bible says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Yeah, yeah. And so, we got to be sifted. Yeah, hey, got to deal with it every now and then. Hey, some sifting's going to show up. Don't run away from the church because you're getting sifted. Don't give up on God because of your sifting season. You're not the only one going to be sifted. All oh, Reverend Doctor going to be sifted too. No, don't give up on God. All the saints are going to be sifted. This sermon ain't the sifting of Simon. It ain't just the sifting of the Savior. It's the sifting of the saints. Yeah, you're going to be sifted. Despite your placement in the congregation. You're going to be sifted. Despite your penchant for supplication. Some stuff you can't pray your way out of. Yeah. Some stuff you can't praise your way out of. Come on, grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up. Some stuff you can't pay your way out of. Some stuff you just got to go through. I asked you, can I go old school in a new school church? Through it all. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, i learned to depend upon his word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I got to close. I'm going to close a little message. Can I find 10 people in here who are still grateful for the fact that God teaches you some stuff in the sifting season you would never learn when the sun was shining? Well, you got to be sifted. You got to be sifted despite your placement in the congregation, despite your penchant for supplication. But can I close? Because I've been giving you some rough news here. So I need to give you some good news. I'm a good news preacher. I'm a gospel preacher. Gospel means good news. I got to give you some good news. And the good news is, watch this. Every sifting season has a point of termination. Oh. <laughs> there are three of us shouting in this room. Others of us just felt something right there. And somebody put a smile on their face. Come here, lean in real close. Get close to your device. Because I need you to understand every sifting season has a point of termination. 
can I take you back to the table? Can I take you back to the table? Because Jesus says, Simon! Hey, man, Satan has asked, desired, no, demanded to sift all y'all like weak. But don't stress, don't trip. I prayed for you. <laughs> and I pray that your faith would not fail. So that when you have turned back, when you get converted, you can strengthen your brothers. You missed it. Rewind, press play. Uh, he said, listen, Satan trying to take y'all out. Don't stress, don't trip, don't jump out the window, come on down off that ledge. Because I prayed for you. And I prayed that your faith would not fail. So that when you turn back, you will strengthen your brothers. Okay, then tell me the third time is the charm. I got to preach it till everybody gets it. The Bible says, Simon, uh, he's trying to take all y'all out. He's trying to strike the sheep so the sheep, to check the shepherd so the sheep will scatter. He's trying to sift all y'all like we, but I prayed for you. Oh, you need to hear that because I did not pray. Watch this. I did not pray you wouldn't have a bad day. I did not pray that folk wouldn't get on your nerves, even church folk. I did not pray that you wouldn't struggle every now and then. I prayed that while you're in the struggle, your faith won't fail. Is there anybody listening to me on this Sunday who can testify? I've been through the storm and rain, but I still got faith in the Lord Jesus. I still believe he's a way maker. I still believe he's a storm tamer. I still believe he's a provider. I still believe he is my everything. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I still have faith. Oh, child of God, we're in a pandemic now. We're in a problematic circumstance now. But I wonder if there's anybody who's still got your faith. <laughs> I know you may have lost some stuff along the way. Some of us have lost some loved ones in this time. Some of us have lost some finances in this time. Some of us have lost some of our joy, it seems, during this time. But is there anybody who can still testify? I still trust God. <laughs> I still believe God. I still believe he's a way maker. <laughs> I still believe he's a battle axe in battle. I still believe there is nothing too hard for him. I still believe that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. He says, listen, in the midst of all of this, don't you lose your faith. Last time I checked your Bible, faith is still the substance of things hoped for. It's still the evidence of things not seen. Last time I checked your Bible, the Bible says that the just shall live by their faith last time i checked your bible the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight the bible says that without faith it's impossible to please him and i wonder if i got some faith walkers at the house of hope who can testify i still believe god i still know he can do what nobody else can do i need some people who got enough faith to believe that this pandemic will come to an end and we will be able to get back together and we will celebrate god together and we will worship god together and we will bless god together and we will praise god together i need somebody who's got enough faith to believe that your child will get off drugs that your children will be saved that your loved ones will be restored i need somebody to believe that he's still a healer he's still a way maker he's still a provider is there a faith walker somewhere who can testify that there is absolutely nothing too hard for our god the bible says i prayed for you and i prayed that your faith may not fail but that's not the end of the story dr smith because the bible says that when you are converted when you are turned back when you get your act together I want you to look back and strengthen your brothers and sisters that's the final word for you today because somebody ought to begin to testify that sifting seasons come to an end I need somebody to look with the eyes of faith and believe that since Trump didn't last always trouble won't last always is there anybody listening to me on this third Sunday who can testify I still believe that God is able to do what nobody else can do I need some warriors now to get up out your bed push back from that kitchen table begin to lift your hands and thank your God that sifting seasons come to an end I need you to praise your God that 
that God is working all things together for your good. Can I find somebody who will help me celebrate on this third Sunday that he is still working a work in my life that nobody can conclude until he says it's over. The Bible says he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So be not dismayed. Whatever be tied in the midst of it all, God will take care of you. Be neither of love abide God will take care of you can I find ten witnesses who know he's been taking care of you can I find somebody who can testify if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I don't know where I would be but I feel like lifting him up cause he promised me that this too shall pass be not weary in well doing cause in due season you shall reap if you faint not can I find somebody who will help me close this message and begin to testify this sifting season shall come to an end this sifting season shall have a point of termination and when it happens I'm going to lift up my hands in celebration to the God who worked it all together for my good I'm sorry y'all I just messed up you ain't got to wait till the battle is over shout now shout now can I find somebody who will lift up your hands while you're in your bedroom and begin to thank God that everything is going to be alright I'm going to my seat y'all but is there anybody listening who can testify we serve a God who is still able to work all things together for your good I feel like sitting down but I feel like shouting a while so if you don't mind can I go higher and celebrate the fact that God is still at work in our lives. Is there anybody listening to me this Sunday who can testify our God is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy and since I know he's able to do all of that it just makes sense for me to open up my mouth and give him glory is there anybody listening to me this Sunday who can testify my God is worthy I said he's worthy he's worthy of all of my praise so I feel like lifting him up on this third Sunday cause it doesn't make sense that I'm still in my right mind after all the hell I've been through after all the sifting I've been doing after all the trouble I've experienced but since I'm here and since I'm alive and since you're here and since you are to find the redeemed folk I need to find the saved folk I need to find the restored folk let the redeemed of the Lord say so I did not say look so I didn't say clap so I said let the redeemed of the Lord say so open up your mouth lift up your voice and shout
You may have felt like giving up. But you didn't expect it to last this long. You didn't expect protracted predicaments. Ah! But I came to tell you that the one who prayed for you has never left you. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Don't you give up, child of God. This season's gonna come to an end. It's ugly now. Doesn't make sense right now. But I hear the Lord saying, I know the plans I have for you. And those plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. If you can't shout on anything else, House of Hope, you ought to shout on that. There's a future coming for you. Future and the hope. And he says that to people who are in exile for 70 years. He says that to people who can't get to the house of God. He says that to a people who are being ripped apart. Who feel like they can't even sing the Lord's song because they're in a strange land. And on this Sunday, child of God, you hear me when I tell you, you do not have to throw in the towel. Because the Lord Jesus himself is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, praying for us. Lord, bless my baby. Lord, keep my child. Don't let him go too far. Don't let her lose her mind. He prays for you. And when we come out of this, we're going to look back and strengthen our brothers and sisters. We're going to encourage somebody. We're going to let somebody know if God brought me through some stuff, he can do the same thing for you. Anybody recognize it today? Anybody believe it today? If you believe it, give him the glory that is due unto his name. Even though we sometimes have to deal with the sifting of the same. Oh my God, my God. Satan has desired. Satan has demanded. But I pray for you. Doesn't matter about your placement in the congregation, your pension for supplication. That's going to be a point of termination. He's prayed for us. And not only does he pray for us, he, he's allowing us to pray for our, each other. And, and if you need prayer right now, <laughs> I want you to get your phone and text the word prayer to number 678-201-1351. Hallelujah! Our prayer team is waiting. You're going to get through this, child of God. It's gonna, that's going to that's gonna be a point of termination. Listen, you want prayer, I want you to text that word prayer. Maybe you want to connect with some other saints. It's the sifting of the saints, not the sifting of the individual. All of us got to go through it. That's why you got to be around others who've been through it to help you get through it. And you want to be a part of connected to this ministry, I want you to text the word CONNECT. It's 678-201-1351. Whether you're in Georgia or Ghana, Atlanta or Alaska, text that word CONNECT. It's 678-201-1351. Third, maybe you want to be saved. He, he, he went and died. He, Jesus was sifted so you and I could be saved. And if you're not sure if you die, heaven's going to be your home. Text the word salvation to 678-201-1351. If you want prayer, connection to salvation. And last, if you missed the first offering, but you are blessed, you want to sow a seed, you can give right now by text to give or cash app through the website. Or you can give right now through the P.O. box. Uh, the preacher said that's going to come to an end. God's got a purpose for it and a plan for it. Listen, what you're going through now can't compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in you. God's got something great for you. The sifting's going to be over soon. And so right now, would you take a moment, just tell, just tell God, say, whatever you do for me, you and God, whatever, my mind. However, yeah. <laughs> When I'm being sifted, alone, I know my, 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 
Him. Hallelujah. Now, so your troubles and trials only come to make you strong. Even the sifting. Everybody, your troubles. <laughs> Do y'all believe that? Do y'all believe that? Why do they come? Said they only come. Only come. My, my, my. To make you strong. Shifted. I reckon that your present suffering, listen now. I reckon that your present suffering, the suffering that your siblings can't be compared. Can't be compared to a glory of you. To glory.
I dare somebody to just start typing, it's gonna work out. I dare you to start typing, it's gonna work out. I dare you to start typing, it's gonna work out with exclamation marks. God is in control. Yeah! 
crucified he told us as often as we do it just do this in remembrance of me and because of his blood you can handle the sifting I want you to go ahead and gather your elements for this moment of communion Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. God laid upon him the iniquity of us all, for he was wounded. Our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Because of him, we're healed. I don't care who you are, where you are, God loves you. It's an unconditional love. And I, I want you to get what represents the body of Jesus. The Bible, the Bible says he break it and then he blessed it. God blessed this a symbol of your, the body of your son. Which is given and broken for us. We take nine remembrance of him. Eat you all of it represents our Lord. And then he took the cup. Fruit of vine representing his blood that was going to be shed for the remissions of sin. Father, thank you for this symbol of the blood of Jesus. And we know it's going to work out for us because of the blood. Drink, y'all, live it, represent the blood of our Lord. Thank God for the blood that came streaming down for me. It was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. I'm going to say it again. I thank God for the blood yeah, that came streaming down for me. It was the blood. That's an old song, y'all. That made the difference at Calvary. Come on, help me say it. Somebody say, I thank God, I thank God. Come on. I thank God for the blood. Come on, that came streaming. That came streaming. Me, it was the that made the difference at Calvary. Just one more time, just one more time. Somebody say, say, I thank God. I Came 
Thank you. Thank you for sifting. The sifting of Simon, the sifting of the Savior, and for letting us know that that will be the sifting of the saints. But we give you praise that you've already prayed for us. That when we get converted, when we find our bearings, we're going to go back and have strength because it's working out for our goods. So as we close this service on this third Sunday in August, Thank you for everything you're perfecting in our lives, even now. Now cover your people with the blood. Cover your people with the blood. Cover us that even when the sifting season comes, we have strength in knowing that there's a point of termination on the sifting. And when it's all over, we're going to come out with our hands lifted, giving you the glory, giving you the honor, and giving you the praise. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you. Everything's going to be all right. Give God praise for Dr. Marcus Cosby, who blessed our souls. My God, what a word. God sent this man of God. Come on. Come on. Type in the comments. Thank you, Dr. Cosby. Thank you, Dr. Cosby, for that word. It's going to be all right. I love you. Have a great week. Y'all show Dr. Cosby some love as we close this service. I love you. Have a great week. I love you. It's going to be all right. I love you. It's going to be all right. I love you. It's going to be all right. I love you. It's going to be all right. I love you. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah.